Hotepu gatekeepers. Today let's discuss a bit about the physics of our raw golden beetle gatekeeper shamanic system. And what I want to show here is how the black gaze of Kemet, those scientists of Kemet, understood what a particle was and what a wave was, what they call now in physics wavicles. And those of you who are more allied to the scientific bent of life understand that there are many arguments about this in the science community. What is a wave? What is a particle? Are they the same? Are they different? And they are like baboons fighting amongst themselves to figure this out. But if they chose to have humility and to look at the cultures that may have already figured this out, they might find the answer. In fact, they would find the answer. So, very briefly, in Kemet, a particle is basically when a vibrating string that looks just like this word here for Ra. This is the word Ra, R A, and these silent glyphs telling you more information. But the pronounced parts are R and A, Ra. And his name begins with the R letter, which is a vibrating string. Imagine you had a taut rubber band and you plucked it. And if you stared at it, at eye level, you would see it makes this shape as it vibrates. You have these two nodes where you're holding the string, the rubber band. You pluck it, it vibrates like this, making this eye shape or this mouth shape. So Ra is the god of light. He's the god of energy. He is the principle of light, the principle of energy. And the very first letter of his name shows a vibrating string. And this also, this letter means an open mouth. So we have something about energy, Ra, shown here in full form. The lord of energy, the lord of light vibrating like a string and that string emits something sound already a lot of physics in one little glyph so if you look here at this shape which is called the vesica piscis or the vesica pisces it's kind of fish shaped you see it here in this diagram of a vibrating string. So we're starting by looking at the universe from the point of view of string theory. But in Kemet it wasn't a theory, it was how they said the universe was made. The Dogon, who are the Africans that left Kemet during the invasion of the white terrorists from the north, and the Dogon were dispatched by the pharaoh to preserve the secrets of the temples of Amun. And so they went from the Nile Valley of Black Egypt and they moved westward to Mali, modern Mali, established themselves in the rock hills of Mali and became a very quiet people. And it wasn't far from where Mali is today, where the Dogon Center is today, that we had the great University of Timbuktu, Timbuktu, which was known as a great center of learning in West Africa, because the priests of Timbuktu were actually the Amun priests from Egypt, who became the Dogon priests, who fueled the intellectual renaissance of the Timbuktu University. And so the Dogon called their supreme being Amma, A double M A, Amma which sounds a lot like Amun. So the Dogon were the keepers of Amun, Amma, and a lot of Ra, of Amun Ra as well. So here we see the Dogon taught that Amma spoke the universe into being. And the speaking, this is a word or a glyph for mouth. 
but mouth and vibrating string are the same word. So the Dogons say that the universe was woven by tendrils of cosmic thread. And the Kamal say the same thing, that the universe was woven. It is a fabric called the fabric of the universe. Well, fabric means a warp and a weft. You see? So we're starting with string theory, which the Dogon teach were taught in Africa, of, in, in Kemet, Africa. So we have this string vibrating, making a mouth sound. Now where do you see the particles? Well, when you see the waves crossing here, there's a particle shown here in gray. So if you divide this one in half, making an octave, you get another particle. You perceive a particle, or a knot, or a node. Then if you take each of these halves and cut those in half, you get another knot, another node, another particle. So basically what I'm saying is that particles are where cosmic threads, cosmic strings, or waves, are crossing or interfering. You see it's forming a very clear pattern. Only where you find the strings crossing do you find a node, a knot, or a particle. And what's happening is we're increasing the frequency. Here we, we have a lower frequency, a lower note, so to speak. We've doubled it to a higher frequency. Now we have two and we're making tinier and tinier fractals. Now we have three of the same shape, only smaller. Now we have four of the same shape, only smaller. You see we're zooming in fractally. Five of the same shape, self-similar, scale invariant, smaller. Smaller still, smaller still. And as we're getting more and more little fish, we're getting a higher frequency. This is a low frequency, this is a high frequency. This is a low note, this is a high note. Recall we said the word for creator, ra, light, energy is vibrating and a mouth. Well, mouth is singing a note. So this is saying that ra is actually singing. Here, this mouth is singing a low frequency. These mouths are singing a higher frequency. And these mouths are singing an even higher frequency. And the particle is where the waves interfere. Also shown here, a little differently. Here we have what's called in green the constructive interference where the wave crests meet. So they're all in green, 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 where you have two waves crossing. Again, where two waves cross, you have a point. Where they don't cross is called destructive interference where the wave crest and trough meet. So in this area between the two green dots here, you would not perceive a particle. You would see a wave. When they cross, you perceive a particle. When they don't cross, you perceive a wave. Because they cancel out the interference, cancels out, so you don't see a particle, you just see a wave. So this explains, from the committed point of view, what is a particle. It's where two cosmic string waves cross or interfere at their crests, and the wave is the part where the crests and troughs meet. So you'll see a particle here. You won't, you'll just see a wave here. But you'll see a particle there. You'll see a wave there. And that's it. It's a matter of perspective, what you're focusing on. And that's why in the famous double slit peer experiment, where sometimes a wave looks like a wave and sometimes it looks like a particle, if the observer is staring at it, it acts one way. If the observer is not staring at it, it acts another way. Is simply saying, here the word ra is hidden in this glyph for the eye. This also is called the eye ra. Well, the eye is the perceiver, the observer. And the very shape of the human eye and the eye ra has this implied vesica piscis, this implied vibrating string open mouth. So when the perceiver looks at this wave 
it may act, or more like this wave, it may act one way upon perceiving it, and then you turn away, it acts like something else. In one vein, it acts like a wave, you turn away, it acts like a particle, or vice versa. And so, this was all understood in Kemet that the perceiver, the observer, affects what the wavicle appears to look like and that when the observer is looking at it there is a point where the quantum wave function collapses into a singularity called a particle and you're able to perceive the particle and otherwise you just see this no particle just a wave okay so that's our brief tutorial on wavicles from the Egyptian point of view. We go much more into this in the training for gay men in the Golden Beetle shamanism initiations. But this was to give you a little taste of the beauty of ancient Black Kemet, the science of our religion, because this is a religious symbol. This eye is a religious symbol. This is the name of a god. This is a god. And I'm discussing our beautiful, all-powerful black gods from a scientific angle because in Kemet the gatekeepers taught that science and religion must be the same thing. They cannot be separated. It is impossible for a Kamau to separate the two because we are right-brainers. In fact, Kamau are more balanced brain, leaning towards the right. As you see here, visual beauty, artistic splendor, and scientific rigor and detail. That's a balance of left brain, right brain. So, may the eye of Ra bring light upon this argument of what really is a wave and what really is a particle. Dwawend Hotepu.